I, I like to combine uh, ambient light with, uh, with strobe, and I do it a lot. Um, I find that it, it sort of allows my background to become seamless in a way and very, uh, um, very flat. And, uh, and the picture itself almost becomes like almost uh, one-dimensional. By lighting the subject in the foreground, I find that I can like pop them, they pop forward. The technique that professional photographer Annie Leibovitz just described, using the light from a flash and daylight to produce unusual and effective portraits, is something that any amateur photographer can easily accomplish. You don't need any expensive or elaborate equipment. All you need is your 35 millimeter camera, a flash unit, and a subject. It's a technique that's usually called fill-in flash because you use the light from a flash unit to, to lighten or fill in the shadows of your subject. Now, if you've only been using your flash indoors, you're missing out on half the fun of it because you can create great portraits outdoors, even on a sunny day, where you'd be tempted to say, hey, I've got plenty of light out here. Now, I've got my 35 millimeter camera. I've got my flash unit with fresh batteries. Need one more thing. I need a subject. So I brought along professional model and my friend Chrissy Lee. Chrissy, how are you today? Okay. Fine. Chrissy, let's come down here just a little bit. Together we're going to show you how you can benefit from a flash because even though we've got plenty of light out here today, there's one flaw. Chrissy, you can see that too. It's all coming from one direction. Now, Chrissy, if I could turn you around and maybe place you right here, we're first going to consider this shot without any fill in flash. The sun is very strong, but so are the shadows on Chrissy. Right now, Chrissy has her back to the sun, so her face is almost totally in shadow. With an averaged exposure here, Chrissy's face will look dark in the finished photograph. If I expose the picture based on a close-up metering of Chrissy's face, and my camera will let me take a spot meter reading from right here, I'll succeed in lightening the face, but the bright areas in the background of the picture, as well as the places where the sun's hitting Chrissy, uh, such as her shoulders, will go hot in my picture. They'll be totally burned out with no detail. It'll look like a mistake. Of course, I could ask Chrissy to turn around and face directly into the sun, and I'll do just that. Chrissy, if you'll turn around and let the sun illuminate your face, and as you can see, we've got some problems here, because with the sun directly in her face, first of all, there's a bunch of shadows. She's got some shadows across this side, underneath her hair, and if you have your subject facing directly into the sun, you're going to get some squinting, and that really is not very good for a portrait. The problems we have here really are the unevenness of the light. We've got bright highlights and harsh shadows, and the overall effect is, well, not very good for portrait work. What we could do, a couple of options, we could move, but really I chose this location on purpose. I like this background, the bricks and the greenery, and, and we're going to stay right here. Also, we could wait for a cloud to come over and perhaps diffuse some of the light. That's not going to happen on a day like today. So really, I think both of these options are unreasonable. I think a reasonable option, however, is to use fill-in flash. There are some cameras that can automatically calculate fill-in flash for you, but for the most part, 35 millimeter SLRs can't do it alone. You've got to do a little calculation to make sure the right amount of light hits your subject. Too much, your subject's going to wash out. Too little, and there won't be any difference, really, between the shot you take using fill-in flash and the one you might take just using ambient light. Ambient, by the way, is just a classy way of referring to the natural light that's available in any scene that you shoot. So what we're going to be doing is combining ambient light with the light from my flash. Now, the first thing that we have to do is set the camera to the flash sync speed. You probably recognize the sync flash speed on your shutter speed selector. It's the speed shown in a different color, and on this camera, it's a 60th of a second. Next, I'm going to mount my flash on top of the camera. I've got to figure out what f-stop I'm going to use to give me the proper exposure of this scene, just as it is, at a 60th of a second. Using the camera in its manual mode, looking through the viewfinder, I can see that f-16 at a 60th of a second is the proper exposure. I could take the shot right now. I mean, I'd get the proper exposure, but I'd also get some very harsh shadows on Chrissy's face, and it wouldn't make her look too attractive. You know, Shadows look their best when they're only one or two stops darker than the highlights. It's the contrast, the real bright highlights and the real dark shadows that, that you really don't want. You want to even things out so that the difference in the correct exposure for the shadows that are very dark and the highlights that are very bright is really only one or two stops different. And that's where that flash comes in. So you can even things out so that the difference between the two, the shadows and the highlights, are much, much less. So where do we put the flash? If we're too close, like right here, the light from the flash unit is going to just wash everything on Chrissy's face away. 
be too bright. Yet, if we step clear back here, a long ways away, the shot's not going to be as effective, first of all. Plus, the light from the flash unit isn't even going to reach Chrissy's face. It's not going to do anything to those harsh shadows. So, where do we put the flash? What's the ideal location? Where it's close enough to get rid of those harsh shadows, yet not far enough away so that it's ineffective. That is the key to using your flash unit as a fill-in flash. Here's how you do it. Now, first of all, we've determined that the proper exposure out here is F16 at a 60th of a second. On the back of my flash, there's this chart. For the film I'm using, which is ISO 100, I've set that right up here. If I were using flash only, F16 would be the proper exposure to use when I'm six feet away from my subject. You see that white number right there, F16, six feet away, the tan colored number. What you do is look at the back of the flash and check to find the proper distance for one or two f-stops wider than the f-stop you're actually using. So we've got it set at F16. Let's go over to 11 and eight and we see that the proper distance would be somewhere between 8 and 12 feet. And that's the proper distance for the flash. So it looks to me like I need to be somewhere between 8 and 12 feet away from Chrissy to get a good exposure using both ambient light and my flash. It's easy to figure out. You just look two stops away from the actual f-stop that you're using, and that's the distance you need to be. Again, for me, it's between 8 and 12 feet. But since my flash is mounted on my camera, my camera also needs to be somewhere between 8 and 12 feet away from Chrissy. And that's fine if that shot looks okay. But what do you do if you don't really like the framing? Well, you do have a, a range of 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 feet. But here's a better way to solve that problem. Bring along a zoom lens. So let's just say you're 10 feet away, yet with your zoom lens, you can go right in and get a frame-filling close-up of Chrissy and get a good portrait. So remember, the next time that you face a bright, sunny day and you want to get a portrait just like the pros do, bring along that valuable piece of equipment to use as fill-in flash.